Are you looking to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? For high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Takeyoursupplements.com. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program. Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 130. Wow, it is absolutely amazing. You know, when we started this journey 15 months ago, I just had no idea what to expect. And to think that we've reached a million downloads is so amazing. Uh, I just know that it's such a true testament to the fact that we are starving for real true health information. And that is ex exactly why I have today's guest on. You see, I went to the Facebook group, the Learn True Health Facebook group to talk to our listeners uh, because I'd love to interview some of our listeners in celebration of our millionth download. It is all about you, the listener who wants to learn how to gain true health. It's a continual process. You know, we're never done. It's all about the journey and about the growth. And so I asked the list, uh, listeners, and of course, you as a listener can join the Learn True Health Facebook group. It's free to join. Just search Learn True Health in Facebook and join the group. Or you can go to learntruehealth.com slash group. That'll redirect you to the Facebook group. And so I asked this week uh, for some of our listeners to come on the show. And of course, what did I get? I got a, a wonderful nutritionist. So of course, we got someone who is um, helping people gain their health back. And it, it, what she has created is actually something that I've always wanted, which is a, a Trader Joe's cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Celine Kosu, it is so wonderful to have you here today. And I was going to actually, it's a little bit of a different interview because I wanted to ask a listener uh, what the impact has been on your life uh, around the, uh, you know, the podcast and the episodes that we've done and how it's helped you. Uh, but first, I'd, I'd love to for you to start by sharing your story, what led you from now you are from originally from France, what led you to move to the States uh, to be pursue becoming a certified nutritionist and wellness coach, what led you to move out to um, the, the, the Southern California and lead all these wonderful cooking lessons where you teach uh, families how to cook healthy during our very busy lives. Tell us your story. Thank you very much, Ashley. I'm, I'm so happy and honored to be um, on the show today with you. So, um, okay. Um, so I was uh, born in, in, pa in Paris, but raised in the south of France. And uh, so, um, you know, in France, it's true that it's not a cliche, but um, everybody is cooking and baking from scratch. It's 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 real. All my friends, their mom, you know, in the afternoon they were baking cake, and for for snack time, everybody had some crepes or or, or some cake. And uh, so I was raised in this. Um, beautiful and happy uh, <laughs> uh, foodie family actually uh, my mom is a great host she knows how to to have an amazing uh, 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 dinner and uh, so she it was always like that way and um, I then I worked uh, I went to Paris I, I worked in Paris and um, before that actually when I was in high school I met my husband who is still my husband actually a long time after that we're still together it's amazing so I met him when uh, we were 15 years old and um, so then I went to Paris to do some uh, to work in Paris actually and uh, oh, he also joined me after that and uh, he, he got a, a job in New York City. So we moved in 93 to New York City. At this time, we were not uh, married, we were just fiance. And uh, so I quit my job, I quit, you know, I left my job, my family, my friends, um, and I really wanted to live in New York City. So, um, and in New York City, um, actually this is really where also I, um, I was, um, I was surrounded by, uh, you know, um, beautiful foodie shops like Dylan De Luca, you know, those little shops when you have 
amazing food and the, the display of the food is really good. And I was actually, we were going out a lot because uh, it was a way of life in New York City. And, but I was also uh, cooking. They had the beautiful um, uh, farmer's market over there. And then a few years later, after the crazy life in New York City, uh, you know, we wanted to have a big change. And uh, because after a while, New York is fun, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it can be stressful. So we decided to move to the Southern California because we have one friend who was living here and um, it was always beautiful and sunny and people are really amazing. So we decided to move to Southern California. So we moved to San Diego. And then a few years later, um, I was pregnant with twins. And um, so we have to move actually to a suburban area. So now we live between San Diego and Los Angeles. Which is so and beautiful. The, the, it, anywhere in between LA and San Diego is yes. so beautiful. It's true, it's true. And the weather is really fantastic, you know, to wake up every morning with a sunny, uh, sunny, uh, sun is so amazing. It's uh, really, it makes a difference. I really believe that. And when I moved to this place where people commute a lot, um, families are busy with the kids, they have a lot of after school activities, you know, soccer, gymnastics, things like that. And um, then I belong to a little group of uh, mom with twins and I was surrounded with mothers. They had no idea how to cook, how to feed their children. And every time I was going to the park or we had birthday party, I was like, wow. <laughs> what? I couldn't believe what people, what people were, um, what they were eating. And when I was going to the, the grocery store, people were stopping me and asking, asking me, what is this? How, how do you cook this? <laughs> so I was, it, it was funny because I thought, you know, <laughs> so, and it was so basic. A fig is a fig, you know, or, or maybe rhubarb is more, maybe different, but there was a lot of question. Even the, the people who, who um, you know, the, the clerk over there, they, they were asking me, how do you do that? How do you cook it? So I was thinking, you know, uh, people they don't they don't have they don't know how to cook they don't know how to feed themselves. It, it's just a package and uh, fast food and takeout and something is wrong. So I decided to give cooking class. This is really how I started. And um, I went to the community center. They have a kitchen, and I asked them, okay, I would like to cook uh, healthy, healthy um, cooking and. Um, so I started um, cooking, actually teaching um, how to cook to young kids. And it's funny because I was talking with the, the manager of one center last time and he was telling me, you were so brave because the first class you give to kids, you were teaching them how to make a zucchini soup. <laughs> so it was really new for them, a zucchini soup, you know. So um now I've been teaching a lot of class uh, for adults and kids, everything from scratch, everything from, um, um, you know, the natural uh, food um, food market we have. So, um, and that's it. So I have been teaching for 10 years now. Wow, and I, 10 years. Yes, and I really love it. And uh, I have a lot of people who come back to my class and uh, or sometimes I, I see them at the grocery store and they 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 tell me oh you know the the little cookie we made together now it's a big staple in our house we make it a lot so I it's funny because I have a good feedback what we I teach usually people they do it again at home and again and again so um this is wonderful I'm very proud of that because I know they are eating um, healthy <laughs> Right. Absolutely. I, I laughed so hard when you said that people come up to you in the grocery store and say, what is that? <laughs> How do you cook that? I, I think we're on the right track in terms of eating a whole foods diet when people start or, or the cashier, when the cashier says, yes. what is what is that? When they don't even know what, know. what the, the checker doesn't know what what that is. I've had people stop me and because you can see clearly I've bought ingredients for a meal and they look down at, and I, the so, someone in the, in the line kind of has the courage to say, what, what are you going to make with that? Right. I'll, I'll buy some purple cabbage and, and a bunch of other ingredients. And then they're looking at me like, what, what, what do you do with purple cabbage? Right. And I'm like, Oh, what, what can't you do with purple cabbage? <laughs> 
so many things. So I think we're on the right track when when some people like get, get enough vegetables um on your cart that uh yeah. at the you know at the you know at the checker so that people in line start asking you what you're what you're making um especially the unique looking ones uh i love challenging what I, I when i started getting into a whole foods diet uh to get away from the sort of the very yeah. mundane meat and potatoes that we're used to uh, I challenged myself to pick a new vegetable every week uh, wow. or every yeah. you know, every time I went grocery shopping. It's like pick something I've never had before. And, you know, I got we have Google now. We can we can see how to make it. And uh, I couldn't believe how delicious the um, fruits and vegetables I've never tried uh, can be. So so really, you got to stretch, stretch yourself, stretch your bubble. Now, I you've know. been helping people for 10 years in the um it's an area in between San Diego and LA. So listeners, if you know anyone or if you yourself are in Riverside or Temecula, yeah. what, what other areas do you teach your cooking classes? So, uh, yeah, uh, Murrieta is also a, a city, a mini fee. And uh, sometimes I, I can travel. Like if I have uh, some people, like a private cooking party, I do Ooh. that also. Yeah, so if people are even in LA ask me to, to go over there and so they invite their friends, their family and we decide the menu the time and we cook together they set a nice table and uh, you know they have a fantastic uh, uh, dinner that you know everything they make together so it's it, it's a fun time because even in my class what people say is that because when you cook together it's a relaxing moment you are in the moment like you are almost in the yoga because you have to be focused when you cook because you can cut yourself you can burn yourself you know so you have to be really in the moment and because of that actually um it makes your your cooking experience very relaxing and people after they they're done with my class after we eat and we enjoy what we made they are say oh i feel so relaxed because <laughs> You know, I have to focus. I couldn't, I didn't have the time to think about yesterday or tomorrow. I have to focus. And it's so true because, and I think this is the beauty of cooking, um, you know, um, healthy and um, from scratch is that you you can um, have your own time and, you know, it, it's, it's very relaxing. So this is what I, I think makes a big difference between uh, something you, you know, you cook really fast and it's important to cook with love. And I think it's it's something, I know it sounds maybe cliche, but it's true. You, uh, When you, you are stressed or not in good mood, your, your food is not going to be good and not tasty. But if you are relaxed and happy, your food will be delicious. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree with you. One of my favorite books as a kid was... Um, Como para agua chocolate, which of course oh. I did not. I did not read it yeah. in Spanish. I just like saying that. Oh. Uh, yeah. like water for chocolate is one of my favorite Amazing. books. I was, I don't know, I was, it was, like, I was coming of age. I was probably around thirteen. I read it over and over again, and it was about Tia. This, um, this, this. It's almost like a Spanish uh, Cinderella story, and also a love, beautiful love story. But, but it was all about cooking and how, and how when she would cook with passion and love, that everyone would fall in love when they ate her yeah. food and. When she <laughs> cried, her tear, salty tears fell into the tortilla soup that everyone and all the family members that ate it would cry. And so it was just it was it was so beautiful how uh, she would love through her food. And she so I, that just reminds me of what you said. But I love what you pointed out, which is that cooking is relaxing. You know, it's this paradox because we come home from this very busy day. Like before we hit record, we talked about how especially in your area, people have to commute two hours. And yeah. I know in a, in a lot of cities, you, you, there's there's so much traffic that we have to. We, it's a 45 minute drive or half an hour drive or an hour drive or sometimes two hours to commute. Finally, we get home. We're starving. We're exhausted, and we say to ourselves, "I'm too tired to cook. I'm yeah. too stressed out to cook. I just want to sit on the couch and relax. I'm gonna get takeout on the way home. I'm gonna order a pizza, whatever." Yeah. And, and what, what we really need though, is we really need to decompress from the day. We really need that me time to decompress. And if we were to just, uh, go push ourselves a little bit more and, and spend 15 minutes in the kitchen cooking, cause you can make beautiful meals in 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, if you just take that little extra 15 minutes, you'll find that after you've, you, you've, you've finished making, preparing the meal and your whole family can turn off the cell phones and turn off the TV and sit together. 
then you actually feel calmer and more relaxed and you have spent that time sort of decompressing away from that that busy, uh, stressful day at work. And especially if you can get your kids or your husband into helping you, like I get my husband to help me chop vegetables and uh, and he's great at it. <laughs> so uh, I, I've trained him well. But if you can get a family member to help you um, at, at their level, then it, be, it slowly becomes this wonderful uh, quality time together. And uh, especially when kids uh, have an experience of being and of course you can speak to this when kids touch the food and are part of the preparation they're more likely to eat the vegetables yeah can you talk yes. about that uh, kids that have you had kids come to your cooking class are like ew vegetables and then yes. afterwards the parents oh, are yeah. like the parents are oh, like yeah. oh my gosh I can't believe my kids eating zucchini I know I actually I have a lot of uh, happy ending like that in uh, most of my class especially the camps because I see the kids for for a week you know for 2 hours a day so I I have really connection with them and uh, I have I have one mother one day she was crying she was telling me oh my daughter she hates broccoli she hates spinach I don't know what you have done but now she loves it and we made I remember we made a chicken pot pie and in chicken pot pie we use broccoli and spinach you know we make the sauce from scratch and everything and uh, it was really tasty and really good and and as you said they made it themselves it was they, it was a mini um, chicken pot pie so they are their own you know and um, and they tested and they were surprised how good it was. So, yes, I have a lot of story like that. And um, and actually, parents, they send me the kids to do that. So actually, they send me the kids um, in order for them to experience something new because uh, we're talking about also they, um, so they, if I have basil, they're going to smell the basil. If I have some spice, you know, cinnamon. So I, it's in my class, every, everything um, they smell, they touch, you know, so it's, and they eat. It, it's really the, what kids love you need to be really um, close to everything, understand things. And I, I'm against people who said, oh, I'm going to hide some uh, some uh, maybe a zucchini here or spinach. I completely I disagree because you you cannot live in this this world. Okay, you have to tell the kids. Okay, you're going to have some spinach in this, and I completely disagree. It's not a good way to to do it because you are lying to your kids first, and then when they're going to growing up, they are not going to understand that, uh, you know, if they go to the restaurant, they're going to have something. Uh, they won't understand that everything was, you know, different because it was uh, cooked in a different way because we were lying to them. You know what I mean? So I, I'm really against um, trying to hide things with other things. <laughs> so we talk about truth, right? So I want to show the kids how we do everything from scratch and they love it. And they're really ready to, they're adventurous. They're more adventurous than some of their parents actually. And, uh, but it helps also, you know, all those, um, you know, the, the cooking shows on TV, you know, uh, kids, they watch more cooking shows than cartoon. <laughs> so, which is great. <laughs> Oh, yes. You know, when I, I I was struck by cooking shows um, in Canada, when I was a kid growing up, we um, in, in Canada, it's a it's very, um, it's a part of our culture to go to the cottage. And so many families will get, uh, have a, a second home kind of up north a few hours away on a lake, or maybe the whole family will and all the cousins will pull together and, and have a family cottage. But it's, it's, it's very common in Canada. And nice. um, oh, yeah, that's, I loved it. I grew up I grew up that way. But um, there was basically a TV with an antenna and three stations. And so if it was rainy or something on a Sunday or a Saturday morning, um, I didn't have, you know, all the cartoon shows. I had um, I had a, a, a Canadian cooking show called Yan Can Cook, and it was an Asian Canadian who would is called Walk with Yan Yan Can Cook or something. And, and so I, I grew up watching uh, how to cook Asian food and I thought it was so cool. I'd, I'd sit there, you know, as a seven year old, just watching for like 25 minutes, the, the cooking shows. And then later on, I discovered the Two Fat Ladies, which is a British uh, cooking show. Yeah, I know. I know this one. Oh, yes, so. and I love them. And so when I when I was about 14 or, or 15, I ended up cooking a seven course meal for my mom for Mother's Day. Oh, wow. And um, 
And she she loved it so much that I ended up uh, hosting for her birthday another another uh, uh, um, dinner party for more wow. more adults. And at one point, I um, when I was uh, fifteen, I got all my friends together and we hosted a, a silent auction dinner with fifty adults to raise money for a local. Um, a local charity it was like a kids camp uh, that had inner wow, city youth go to camp yeah and so wow. we cooked i cooked as a teenager for 50 people and it was that was it was what sparked my interest in cooking was watching these cooking shows so i can absolutely attest that children love watching especially these cooking shows today are so so entertaining so yeah turn parents turn on the cooking shows for your kids and see what happens but <laughs> but yeah absolutely i agree with you now you have this great co cookbook uh cooking with trader joe's uh, uh, it's called yes. Pack a Lunch. Yes. Um, and um, the link to it's going to be in the show notes today's today's podcast, yes. along with the link to your website, which is mm -hmm. CelineCuisine.com. I think that's such a cute name. And, Thank you. Uh, and so for anyone in the Southern California area, please check out Celine Cuisine. Uh, now, Celine, you teach uh, at all the different community centers in yes. in the um, you know, Riverside area and all, all Temecula and all, all those areas. Uh, but you would be willing to travel to L.A. or travel to San Diego to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. private parties which man i think it'd be so cool to do like a, to get all my friends together and do a private parties so that that would be that would be really neat i definitely encourage listeners to do that if you're in the area um now besides your cookbook there's nothing uh you do right now um uh you like you don't teach teach cooking online but you do have a few you do teach some nutrition and wellness coaching yes. And yes. so for those who, because we were talking before and I asked, you know, well, what if someone is in Germany or someone's in Canada or someone's, you know, <laughs> uh, across the world and they, they love your energy and they want to help, they want to figure out how to get their kids to eat vegetables, for example, or maybe they don't know how to eat vegetables. You could, yeah. you could get on Skype with them and do a coaching, yeah. a coaching yes. call with them. Fantastic. And so that's uh, CelineCuisine.com. Well, I want to talk a bit more about your book because I find it so fascinating. Yeah. Now, when you do this, when you do the cooking classes, it's not just Trader Joe's, right? It's, it's. No, no, no. Yes. No, it's everything like it can be, um, you know, like a uh, French pastries or it can be a uh, sushi. It could be a paella, you know, or mini quiche, you know, uh, with the, with the kids, I do a lot of finger food, something you can eat with your finger. Uh, this is really what I like, uh, like, uh, you know, chicken nuggets from scratch and we make the sauce. So um, I do very simple things, even with the adults. Everything is very simple because we don't have the time to spend hours in the kitchen. No one. But if you if you use the right ingredients and if you are ready to cook, you can you can make amazing things. You don't need to be, um, you know, um, I'm not going to cook like Julia Child. It's very simple, uh, very, um, uh, very easy. Everybody can come to my class, beginners, people who never cooked. And after my class, they, they know a lot. And uh, so it just, um, in, in two hours, they, they know how to make maybe one uh, main dish and uh, one dessert, something like that. So um, this is why I teach. And again, everything is very simple. And this is why I did also this, this cookbook with Trader Joe's because um, it's using only a few ingredients that you can repurpose, like you have uh, leftover rice, what can you do? You have leftover pasta, what you can do, you know? Uh, I don't like to waste any food, so usually um, something I cooked the night before, I reuse it the next day, making something different. And this is how people who are really busy um, when they, they, they don't have the time to cook, if they have uh, leftover rice, they can make fried rice, you know, where they add some garlic, they add some uh, coconut oil and some ginger, they fry their egg and that's it. They have a beautiful dish, you know, so that's it. Wonderful. And I love that you also in your book, you outline gluten free and, and vegetarian um, recipes or, or, you know, you, you, you show that that these ones can be gluten free, these ones can be vegetarian. So yeah. you're, you know, you're not, um, you're not just one. You're la you're you're allowing for different um, different yes. ne needs. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love what you said about you know we're not here to like make a five hour meal. This is about yeah. it was about cooking from scratch, which is so healthy. We know what we're eating, cooking yeah. from scratch, uh, cooking foods that are simple but delicious, and also that we can repurpose. So you can make a bigger batch of something for dinner and then re repurpose it for lunch or even dinner the next night, which saves us time. 
Yeah. And uh, and so and so that that's fantastic. I love it. And you know, with leftovers, they always taste better the next day. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> now, as yeah. a listener of the Learn True Health podcast, mm -hmm. um, how did you how did you find my show? It was by chance, actually. So, uh, like everybody, I spend also sometimes on uh, in my car driving my kids here and there on my cooking class and. Um, um, I was very interested in Ayurveda, the Indian medicine, and I was uh, I was searching for podcasts, and I found you, and I was like, first I have to tell you, Ash, your voice is amazing because <laughs> because in a podcast it's so important to have a beautiful voice, and actually I have to tell you this is. If if I I hear some you know some voice that I don't like I'm not going to listen to it mm -hmm. so it was it was like this and so the I was able to to listen to it and I was like wow this is great and uh, the way you you present everything you know because um, I think there's a lot of people right now you know everything goes so fast and everybody is a little bit superficial you know with mm -hmm. the, all the social media and everything. And I thought, and I thought, oh, she's different because she's real. And I like the way you, 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 you. We can feel your passion and uh, everything you're learning, and the way you want to teach other people. So I was like, this is amazing. So the, <laughs> the next day, I was listening to more podcasts. So I talk, I talk about it to of my husband, my kids, even my kids. Oh my God. And even uh, the guy at the, the dry clean, the dry cleaner, he has some health issue, and I. Said, oh, you need to listen to her. <laughs> she knows everything. <laughs> Oh, so I was thinking about your podcast actually in, in my cooking class at the end of the class I give the recipe and sometimes I give information so I give also your 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 podcast so um and people are really interested because when I tell them you know um you you can heal your body you can do this and that and some people know about it but they don't they know about it but they don't want to do any research or anything right. so so I think that your what you are so all the subjects you, you talk about are so um, um, everybody is connected with that at one point or another. So every everybody feels connected to you when they listen to you. You know, I know it, I don't know if you understand what I say, but it, mm -hmm. and it's absolutely absolutely because there so many people are suffering. And, and I just want to help. I want to, I know there's answers just like in nature. I was so surprised to find out that beside, if you look in nature, right, if you go into the woods, if there is a poisonous um, plant, an herb uh, within feet of it is the cure. And that is amazing that in nature, it is set up that if there is the poison, the cure is nearby. And that, that is a symbol for the fact that we have the cure, that the, 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 the way to heal our body is out there. And the way we've been raised and the way um, the media has spun it, that, that we are helpless creatures that need to go to the doctor and the doctor needs to give us a pill, that our, mm -hmm. that our body needs some external chemical man-made thing. Yeah. And it's almost and it's it's almost like we are, you know, cyborgs. We're not whole, complete and perfect. We're not we're not made from God, you know. And and so when we come to natural medicine, natural medicine ha believes in us. Natural medicine fills us with hope because there I've seen I've seen people heal from things you wouldn't believe and and being you know in this a really passionate and, and studying this and working with all these doctors for the last six years. I've seen people heal things that would just make you cry tears of joy and also frustration and anger because you realize that so many people are needlessly suffering and so that's yeah. why i'm doing this podcast is how many lives can we touch how many people can we can we help and so it, you know your um as you're meeting your friends and family and your you know your community if anyone has an illness and i haven't done the podcast on it just um, tell me in the Facebook group and um, and I'll go out and seek out the doctors that are the natural doctors that are actually getting results with that illness. Because I'm that's what I want is I want to be able to bring answers to people, you know, and so so any you or if anyone has a, a suggestion or, or, or wants uh, me to uh, cover a topic, let me know in the Facebook group because I want to bring those answers to everyone. And, you know, maybe one doctor can help a certain percentage of the population and a different doctor is a totally different um 
a way of healing it. But the we're all different. And so maybe for you, what you need is uh, lots of vegetables. And maybe what I need is lots of healthy fats. You know, it's just it's just what our bodies need at different times. But as long as I can bring the information to you, then you can try those different things. Like, um, you know, I was not into cultured foods before I started the Learn Your Health podcast. And and now here, here I am fermenting. I'm making water kefir and I fermented a bunch of things in my kitchen. I started eating a little bit of fermented food each day, which I keep hearing from all these natural, you know, experts, the holistic doctors that I've had on the show. And you wouldn't believe my digestion has never been so good. Oh, yeah. And it's just all, all it was just eating a little bit, tiny bit of fermented food at each meal. And it's delicious. I know it sounds, it's, mm-hmm. you hear fermented, you think that's kind of gross, but like um, just fermented vegetables and I couldn't believe it. So all, all the little things that I learn from these uh, interviews I'm applying to myself I like I'm like one big big uh, guinea pig <laughs> and and it's working so I, I hope that it's helping others as well now how many uh, how long have you been a listener how many episodes do you think you've listened to well I think about uh, 100 now wow. so, yeah oh yeah I oh no every day I'm like you know when I <laughs> I take my car I'm like okay this is the first thing I, I check on my phone the podcast <laughs> if you have a new one <laughs> And what I like also about um, you, Ashley, is that the question you ask, you know, because um, they're very, I don't know how you do it, because they're, they're, perf- no, they're really perfect for me. It's like, oh, this is a question I would like to ask. It's exactly what you're asking. So because I like the way you 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 conduct your, 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 your show. This is amazing because a horse is not easy, I guess. And uh, I, I like the way you do it. It's so, it's so it's like a conversation between two people, but it's the, it's very professional. So, so I, I like it a lot. Really. It's really, it's amazing. It's an amazing job you're doing. I'm, I'm really, I'm amazed. It's fantastic. I wish you could see the smile on my face. <laughs> That's exactly what I aim to do. I I put myself, well, first of all, I think I'm my listener. You know what I mean? I, I really put myself in the shoes of all the listeners, but I'm also seeking answers. I'm also intensely curious and I I want to be the voice of the listener. So you, I, I like to ask the questions that I really think the listener would have. And so thank you for that feedback because it means I'm, I, you know, that was what I aimed to do. So the fact that you picked up on that is really exciting. It means that um, it's working. <laughs> And, and also, and also the guests that you pick, you know, because some of them are famous, some of them are maybe not that famous, but all of them are amazing people. They 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 should be, they should be all over the place. We should know about them, you know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they're they're amazing people. They're passionate. They're smart, but they're also like us, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's you know they don't they don't. Uh, um, the way they talk, it, it's it's um, it's a beautiful way to 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 um, how to teach people how to, to be healthy, and uh, uh, we understand every step. You know, we understand some connection. So I think it's uh, this is why it makes a, a difference because your podcast is I think between you, the host, and the guest you choose, and the, the subject. I think it's. Everything goes well together. It's beautifully done. So <laughs> awesome, awesome! I'm so glad to hear that. Now, do you have any um, favorite episodes you'd like to point out to the listeners, and and why are they your favorite episodes? Uh, yeah, uh, wow. So um, one of the last one I was uh, I really loved, and actually I'm still. And I have to tell you, sometimes I listen once, and then I I need to listen again. Maybe you twice or even three times to really understand uh, because there's so many information and sometimes I even want to take note or something you know because it's so amazing um yes there was this I think it's the episode 126 it was about the the how to balance your hormones um and um the doctor who was invited is from Toronto actually and um he was amazing because First, he was um, he was very um, he knew his knowledge was unstoppable. He knew everything, everything you know, the hormones, how a woman work. It was I was so amazed by his knowledge, and uh, I loved uh, listen to him. But uh, I have so many um, I don't know all the numbers or all the the names, but. Um, 
the one about the immune system also i noted um so there's so many it's really hard because you you have so different topics and subjects but for me every every even if i'm you know when i see it, the title um even if i'm i don't think i'm going to be um maybe connected to this subject i'm listening because i'm learning something even if you know what i mean even i don't have any uh I don't know um, anything about this, or I don't. I'm, I think I'm not interested about knowing something that you you are talking about. I'm still listening, and then I'm learning something. And uh, you know, this is this is why it's great because uh, all the all the podcasts, each podcast, you you learn something, even if it's some some sometimes. You, people are talking about um, almost the same subject is going to be different for the um, with another uh, guest so this is what i like it's that mm -hmm. there's so many uh, information right. so many details right yeah we could talk about hormones with so many different doctors and naturopaths mm -hmm. and acupuncturists and we're going to get different information that's my yeah. goal is mm -hmm. i actually tell them before i hit record is that is that my goal is that they that if this is the last episode that a listener hears that it be the most powerful episode, most powerful um, interview that it changes their life. That I want, I want the guest to share actionable steps that can really, that person can go and apply to their life and can make a really big difference. And so I, I, I set up the, every single guest with this desire to really draw out of them what are the things that they've seen work in their practice with their patients like what really has been effective in helping people and uh, and so my goal is to make sure that we all learn from every single guest because I believe that every single guest has somewhat something to share of, of great yes. value and so it's my job to get it out of them <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Celine, thank you so much for being here to celebrate the Learn to Health podcast and celebrate the listeners because it's because of you that we uh, are reaching a million downloads. That I think that is so amazing. And it's because we want to share, like you said, you're sharing with all your friends and family. It's so funny. My my husband, um, he has all of my bit. We, we created business cards because we kept um telling people, oh, you should listen to my podcast and we'd have to like write it down on something. So we just, we create yes, business yes. cards and every day we go somewhere and my husband pulls out my business card and goes, oh, you should listen to episode da 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 and hands him the business card or, or he'll see someone that we're, and we're talking. So we're I out. need some, I need some. <laughs> <laughs> well, what my husband does now is he goes, he goes, do you have an iPhone? And most of the time people say yes. And he goes, okay, great. Can I show you something? And they're like, sure. <laughs> and he goes, okay, go to the purple icon that says podcast. Now go to, go to categories. Now go to health. See that one right there? That's my wife's. And he's like pointing at me and he's all beaming. And I'm kind of like, I'm not embarrassed, but I'm like, I'm not trying to brag or anything. But I'm also pretty proud of the fact that we've been number one um, in new and noteworthy in health for the last 15 months and new and new and number one one in science and medicine and second in education we've held that spot for in itunes which is um just means that this information needs to get out there and it's popular because we are all seeking these answers and so uh so yeah so we we, we share it with with everyone that we meet um and uh, and i know that my listeners do just like you do as well because we're here to all spread this information now, I want my listeners to spread CelineCuisine.com <laughs> because I think all of us could learn, could definitely take away, um, especially your Trader Joe's cookbook, uh, yeah. which is the links to it are going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Now, can you share something from your cookbook um, that like, a, do you have a recipe or do you have a, some some advice that we could uh, take away today? Uh, some advice uh, is, is just... Um use i think use really simple ingredients you don't need to be fancy uh, so um if i look at maybe um let's see what i have yeah i have actually um a vichyssoise which is on page 52 uh vichyssoise is a is a french uh, soup that we serve cold actually it's chilled and um it's made with licks so um, it's very easy. You use some leeks and diced onions. So everything is at Trader Joe. They have everything already um, ready. The leeks are um, really clean already because you need to 
leeks take time to clean because you have a dirt, a lot of dirt between the, the, the leaves. And so, um, so you can buy them already trimmed and washed, um, or you can buy them also frozen. So you can have them in your, um, your freezer all the, your freezer all the time. So if you take some leeks, you add a little bit, um, um, olive oil, some onion, just a little bit of butter and some potatoes, um, chicken broth or vegetable broth. And you, you cook everything together, salt, pepper, and you mix it. You add some chives on the top and you put it in the, in the fridge for a few hours. You will have a fantastic uh, velvety uh, soup, um, very nutritious and uh, delicious. So do it's- we, uh, Do we um, blend it or puree Yes, you blend it. Yes, okay. yes. You, so so you after your yeah. cook, you, you put it like in a Vitamix or you or you yeah. put it yes. in a food processor and you blend yes. it and then you put it in the fridge. Yes. Oh, it sounds it sounds really delicious. Yeah, it's really good. So it's, it's a very uh, famous French uh, soup recipe that we, we eat cold, actually chilled. And it's uh, it's really different. And uh, because we live in Southern California, it's really hot here. We do a lot of chilled soup like gazpacho or things like that. Yeah. Well, the summer's coming up, and it's pretty much going to be hot everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> you're, unless, right, you're right, you're right. Unless, uh, unless you know, our, our wonderful Southern Hemisphere listeners, which they're just about to, they want to know about the warm soup, so they, they could just drink it warm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but could, could we uh, could we um, mix it up and maybe use bone broth instead of chicken broth if we wanted absolutely. to add more minerals? Uh, or? Yes, yes, absolutely. It, it just... Um, it depends what you you can find uh, available at your store. So it's Trader Joe, but you can you can find leeks and of course everything everywhere. But um, they they have a, a notion of package, you know, and uh, most of things are organic, no GMO. Um, so I believe in this kind of food. Mm-hmm. When sometimes you're really really in a rush, uh, you can use the uh, pre-package done not you need just to um, open it and um, use it but it's not um, it's it's kind of fresh you know what I mean it's uh, so it's, it's healthier than what you buy um, you know the, the frozen food that is processed this is not processed it's just the ingredients that have been packaged that's it have you ever done it instead of potatoes done it with sweet potatoes no, I'm not sure it's going to be, you can try, but it's going to be completely different, completely different tests. So I think the, the potatoes uh, also and the leeks goes very well together. Mm. You may want to try, but it's going to be different. And again, because you add some uh, chives after you blend everything, when you serve, you add some chives or green onions. Um, I, I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure it's going to go well with the sweet potato. It could, it could, but it's going to be very different. So this is why we we are going to lose maybe the the, the flavor of the leeks if we use something else. You oh, know what I mean? Oh, I see. I see. Want, yeah, we want the the powerful flavor of the leeks um, upon everything. Yes. Because <laughs> right, then, yeah, the sweet potato would become the the most yes. uh, yeah prevalent flavor. Yeah. And I was yes. thinking, would you ever add more vegetables to it? Like, would you ever add uh, spinach if you wanted to get more uh, vegetables into someone? Or, or is this really about making it just simple and fast and delicious? Yeah, I think, you know, fast and delicious is, is a good good way to, to put it. Um, but, you know, I think also, um, so of course I have a... Uh, a cookbook with recipes um, but oh I have to say also those recipes every recipe they have a picture so it makes a difference because when you want to make some things a lot of cookbook they don't have any picture so you don't know what the food is going to look like after you are done but in this in this cookbook you have 130 recipes and 130 uh, pictures <laughs> so but um I think that once you once you know how to make something, you can expand it the way you like. You can add whatever you want at one point. It just you want just to be sure the test is going to be good at the end. So you can you can test. And but um, I think recipes cannot be fixed or the same. I I I love to expand, as you said, something maybe basic that you can sp- um, make different, like maybe. Um, completely different, but based on something simple. So I think this is the best way to expand your your testing bud, you know, when you try to add something else to a recipe that you know already. And to make something, at the end, it's going to be completely different, but, you know, it's going to be good. 
you know, I'm look, I'm on your website and I am so impressed by what you do at kids' birthday, the kids' birthday cooking, kids' birthday baking parties. Yes. That you have them bake their own birthday par- birthday yes. cake from scratch. From scratch. I think that's I so know. cool. And I know. then you have different themes like you have French pastry theme and cupcake wars and junior master chef. That is so cool. I know so many kids that would love that. And it's so affordable. Like, you know, I would have thought this would be very expensive, but this is very affordable when you consider, you know, like Chuck E. Cheese, for example, which, you know, or whatever else you would do for a kid's birthday. Uh, This is very affordable because I was back when my son was turning too, I was looking at, you know, should we rent a room at the zoo or, you know, what, what should we, should we rent a room at the kids museum? And yours is, is very affordable compared to all the other kind of birthday options. And then, then the kids actually are totally entertained and, and you don't, the mom doesn't have to worry about providing food because they're the ones making it. <laughs> yes. That's fantastic. And then you also uh, really consider the dietary restrictions like uh, soy and sesame and, and milk uh, allergies and, and uh, gluten. So yeah. I love that. And I see you also, you know, pork or shellfish or anything. So you, you work obviously with them because you're a nutritionist. So you know what to do. This is wonderful. So f- for listeners who uh, either if, if you're nowhere near the Southern California area and you want to learn how to get more vegetables into you or your kids, uh, you can hire Celine to be your nutrition and wellness coach, or you can buy her book, which I highly recommend. And um, you, if you're in the Southern California area, you should absolutely have uh, either like you could do a, a, a girl's night out with a, uh, but a girl's night in with, <laughs> with Celine. <laughs> You know how we do like that uh, painting and wine that that, yeah. that that it's always on Groupon, right? Where the, all the women get together and yeah. they get a glass of wine, <laughs> they get to paint something. Uh, well, it'd be like that, except cooking. And that that would be so much fun. Uh, yeah. Or, or yeah. for a kid's birthday party, because, man, that's that's unique and wonderful. So CelineCuisine.com. It has been wonderful having you on the show. I'd love for you to finish this interview with I'm going to give the floor over to you. What do you what would you love to share with the listeners who are you, you you're one of the listeners, but what would you love to share with the other listeners? What message would you like to leave them with? Um, I want to uh, share that. Um, I think we need uh, more real life. We need the real food. Um, we, uh, you know, less um, be maybe more minimalist in every stage of our life be a little bit less uh, um, concerned about a lot of things, even our, if we have kids, be more, um, not be helic- helicopter parents all the time, and it's hard. I think it's important for parents um, and um, adults to be more free about their life, to um, enjoy every minute. And so it's it's really hard, I think, when you, you have a family or not, you have a job. There's so many things to in your life, in your day life. So sometimes I think we don't um, we don't take time to for ourselves. And I think really what we need we need uh, to have a, maybe a relaxing moment, meditation, yoga is so important. I, I really think that. And um, sometimes just uh, be in the present. I think it's one of the most uh, important. Um, um, thing I, I would like to share because we, we are not, we, we want everything fast. We go fast. We, we are impatient with everything. And I think we need to stop. <laughs> I love that you said that because when we look at the, all the different countries and, and sort of where we are in terms of disease and health, that France, uh, in a lot of ways is a healthier than the United States, right? And healthier yes. than other countries. Um, it's not the, the the top, but it is up there. And that is it, when we look at the, the mindset of the uh, French and the lifestyle that you guys take time to um, cook for like from scratch, that you take time to enjoy life. Um, and, and also I'm reading some parenting books. There's a, there's actually some parenting books sort of, um, 
influenced by the French culture and they're opposite of helicopter parents. They're like, yeah, let that, let that kid go play. Don't worry about it. You know, the kid's going to learn. And it's so funny because it's opposite to what we're doing here, which is just like, you know, hovering all the time and attachment parenting. So the, uh, the opposite of attachment parenting is how the French raise their children <laughs> from what, <laughs> from what I see. And you know, there's not one, there's not one right way, obviously. No, it's true. It's but, true. But I think we could take a page out of uh, those from from France uh, could take a page out of their book in terms of taking time, like you said, to let go of the little things, uh, to let go of more of the materialistic things and, and the things we're worrying about and focus more on being in the here and now in our body with our family, feeling love, feeling peace. And that's why cooking is so important because it brings us grounded back down to the here and now and it, it helps relax us. And that's exactly what we need uh, for our health and and for our joy it's been such a pleasure having you on the show thank you so much celine and i look forward um to hearing more about your success as you help more and more families uh, learn how to cook from scratch and eat healthy thank you ashley it was a pleasure i'm, I'm still i cannot believe i'm talking to you, so <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you again um and uh, it's fantastic and uh, to listen to you every day so it's like uh, you're almost a friend <laughs> it's funny <laughs> because yeah I, I i keep reaching my phone and I listen to you every day <laughs> well you, you're my friend too and i i feel the same way about every listener i really feel like i i'd, I'd want all of you guys to be my neighbors <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. Remember, listeners, you can go to CelineCuisine.com. Take care. Thank you very much. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Learn to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love love the learn true health podcast and want to support us awesome you can go to take your supplements.com and you could support us that way you'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price and there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you that's take your supplements.com or join our membership learntruehealth.com slash join. That's another great way to support our podcast, support our movement, and you'll be supporting yourself. Gain more information, wonderful videos, wonderful trainings, and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well. So go to learntruehealth.com slash join. Want something fun for free? Go to learntruehealth.com and right there on the front page, you'll see where you can get our free cookbook. I spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun. It's really delicious, healthy recipes. And you can also get our seven day doctor course uh, right there. It's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally. So that's takeyoursupplements.com for wonderful supplements. LearnYourHealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership, which is only open for a limited time. You can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you. Just go to LearnYourHealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page. Thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others. Let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave. <laughs>